This is a little bonus video here for how to create vector displacement maps to use for your sculpting session, right? So anything that you want to use as a stencil or perhaps as a stamp um, for repeated objects like we do in the video with the little kind of stump spikes um, or to customize a tool to act a little differently like the knife tool I use in there. You could create kind of different chisel kind of custom nib effects in here. So we're going to show how we do that. I'm just going to start with a simple mesh. I'm going to put down a plane. And this is the easiest way to start building vector displacement maps here. Um, subdivide this up. I'm going to subdivide this to, yeah, we got about 1.6 million polys on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the foamy brush. We're going to build um, a stone, like the vector displacement map that I provide here with the tutorial that has a bunch of different stones. I'm going to just show how to quickly build that up. So. We'll start with a simple foamy brush. Again, this is great to just build up some overall, uh, let's mirror this, some overall form and structure on here. I'll bring the size of the brush out. And we can just start building this kind of stone in here. So I'm working with a little bit of, of symmetry here as I go, which is okay, um, just to get the base shape roughed out here. And then let's just turn the symmetry off and try to build this the edge of the stone out. I don't want it kind of brick-like, but I want it to fit in on the mesh with a little bit of a kind of a, a concave area underneath it there, something that looks like it's it's undercutting a bit. And we'll just rough in this shape here. I don't really care much about how the structure on the top is working. I'm just kind of trying to get the, the depth that I want here. Getting maybe a little bit too thick in there. Let's bring the side out a bit. Okay, there we go. And then what we can start to do is use things like maybe flatten here just to bring it down a little bit. That's fine. So I cover this in the um, in the tutorial video here. Nothing new as to what I'm doing right here. I'm just kind of you know building up a bit of a uh, a stone, simple stone kind of look on here. But the key is I want to build something that has a little bit of an overhang on it here. Let's do that. Bring this around here. I love using the wax brush just to build up things. So again, I'm I cover how I get in depth on the stone uh, sculpting in the tutorial session there. So I'm not going to go too crazy with this, but uh, let's just quickly use some of our tools in here. So I'll use the scrape tool, which again is great for. I'm going to crank the strength up on that and bring this up a little bit bigger. And my fall off, I want to use something quite firm on there. There we go. So we're starting to get a little bit of a kind of chiseled stone look on there. And we can vary that. Start to chisel in some of these little kind of chiseled effects on here. Again, I go in, in more in depth in the video on utilizing these tools to get kind of a hardened surface look on the stone. So I'm just doing this quickly right now, but that'll do. Um, let's build up a little bit more around this edge here and switch back to our scrape. Um, just to kind of randomize the top of that a bit. And then we can just take our flatten brush here again Maybe bring it down a little bit here and kind of start to work some of these edges in. Oh, what, uh, let's use a little bit of a firm fall off on there and the strength. Turn that up. Just flatten some of these guys out a bit. So I'm just kind of roughing in some flattened edges and get my scrape tool going on some of these edges here again as well. Okay, that's fine for our, our rough rock on there. Maybe scrape in some of these edges on here. What we want to do now is be able to transfer our um, sculpt that we have here um, down into a usable map. We want to store this, this object data into a 2D image format. And that's where vector displacement mapping comes in very handy. So there's our stone that we'll use for now. 
Um, so the simplest way to do it, sculpt up your details here. Um, think about how, how much of a resolution you want to have on that. The idea behind the map that I provide in the, um, <clears throat> the uh, tutorial is kind of giving you a base, a quick way to throw down some of these rocks. And then of course you can customize after, right? Use these as a good starting point from the map and then go in and, and deform them further, change the structure on them. Um, by no means do you need to leave it as to what the map gives you. You can go in and, and actually uh, uh, change that up quite a bit on there. So there we go there. I'm going to now write this out as a vector displacement map. So how do we do that? The easiest way to do it is we've started with a simple plane. Go and create another plane. So throw down another simple piece of geometry on there. So I now have two planes in here. And then what I like to do, here's our new plane. Um, I'm going to rename that. So we'll just call that base, okay? Uh, you can start to rename the other one, but I know the other one's the simple plane in there. Then we're going to come up to our maps, extract texture maps, new operation, and you'll see down below here we have vector displacement map. So I'm going to click that. There are a couple things, uh, again, that I should point out. I'm running the Mudbox 2011 subscription advantage pack. But, um, so it may look a little bit different than the, um, the trial version that you can grab from Mudbox 2011, but what I'm doing here is completely in Mudbox 2011, so there's nothing different that I'm doing here. So what I can do now, I have my base selected. I'm going to add that as my target. I'm going to add all the models in here. I don't want uh, some of these guys in here. We'll take that base out. And I want this plane. So it's showing you the base. We're going to use level zero, the plane. We're going to use the top level subdivision. I can customize that, choose what I want. And what size map do we want? Let's just leave it at a 1K map. I can choose anti aliasing I'm going to leave it as this. So again, we're just building some vector displacement maps to throw down some good uh, base structures. Write out a file name. I'm just going to put it to the default directory. Definitely, by all means, put it into your um, project directory where you're working with that. Let's call this a stone. We leave it as this. It's going to actually... Um, put a little suffix there on the end that has an underscore VDM. You can use a TIFF or an EXR or even a PTEX file. For this we're going to use a TIFF file to build our sculpting thing. For sculpting we want to work with our TIFF or EXR file is what we want to use on here. Okay, So again the PTEX will not be in the regular um, 2011 version. That's an SAP thing. doesn't matter. We're going to work with the TIFF right now for this. 32-bit floating point RGBA. It's 32 bits uh, per channel. So it stores all the data that we, we want to use in there quite accurately. And we'll just go ahead and hit extract. And you see this is very quick there. It's finished. Close that. Let's hide both of these guys, actually. And the best way to test it, of course, bring in any mesh, uh, mesh here. Create a bunch of different meshes here if you want. Or the ultimate way to test it is with the base mesh. So I have my base mesh character here that we work with in the tutorial and let's load in our stencil. So a couple ways that we can do that, we can do that through the image browser or we can actually add it manually right here. I'm going to add it from the, um, right on the tray here. So I just have my stencil add stencil and it should bring up a little bit of directory there. Uh, let's go down to our documents here and here is our stone vector displacement map. You see it's a TIFF file. It's under We have an underscore VDM at the end. Go ahead and load that in. Uh, and here it is at the end. So we can see this nice little fancy green map. I'm going to use my sculpt tool. I have a couple of other custom tools that I've created on here. I have a uh, sculpt VDM tool that I've set on here. I'm going to turn off my stamp image for that. The other thing I want to make sure is let's keep the strength up to 100. Our build up, we might want to increase that a bit. I'm not sure. Let's see what fall off we're working with. Uh, any one of these fall offs is fine. And let's subdivide this guy. So I'm going to turn that stencil off for a moment. Let's subdivide him up to something that we want to work with here. Level 4 is fine. Put a new layer down. I'm hitting Q hotkey here. You can see the little bubble on the left here. And we'll bring our stencil up. And we, here's our little rock that we now have in place. Bring the brush in and then we can just dial that in completely based off of that there. So you can see that we're getting a 
pretty good uh, reconstruction, some very accurate reconstruction of the geometry we had. Um, we can keep subdividing that and working with that. The nice thing about working with this is I can vary the size of it. And of course, as I said, I'm not stuck to what I've done on this map here, right? Let's just throw a couple of these down just to illustrate the point. Uh, make this one here maybe a little bit bigger. Throw it in. It's a big giant rock in there. We can customize these further. So we could leave this on a layer, start another layer. I'm just going to leave this on this layer here and work with the scrape tool again, right? So maybe we want to change this up quite dramatically. We can do that. We can keep sculpting or building on it. But overall, the point is there's the quick way to build out a simple vector displacement map to use for your sculpting. The stamp process is actually quite similar. Um, the idea there is that I just sculpted something on, I'm loading it as a stamp so I can repeat it, or you can use it with different tools like I do in the tutorial there. You can use the imprint brush or the imprint tool as well. Uh, so that's it. Just a quick little bonus overview of building vector displacement maps and writing them out.